Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Mission um nope <laughs> of Impact Monday. Um so as promised, I am back to talk about the legal structures that are associated with um starting a social enterprise. So last time we met, we talked about how to choose the right social enterprise. And this week we're going to be talking about some of those social enterprises. So before I even start, let me make a disclaimer and say that I am not a lawyer and I am not offering legal advice. You should consult a lawyer when you are determining which entity you are going to start for your social enterprise. Um, a lot of people don't, but you really should. But I'm just going to give you some information about each of the different entities and the advantages and disadvantages that go along with those entities. So my name is Tracy D. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group. I help social enterprises and social entrepreneurs and small businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures while maximizing their revenue and impacting their community. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. So the first one that I want to talk about is the um, sole uh, proprietorship. So the sole proprietorship is the advantage. It's easy to start. It's a low or no cost startup cost um, because you're not really forming a legal structure. In most places, you need to register with your, mun your municipality. If you're using a pseudo name, if you are not, but you're working from home, you may you still may need to register with your municipality to let them know that you're doing business out of your house. Some municipalities charge, some don't. Most The most I've seen a municipality a municipality charge is about $50. Some of them are 10, some of them are $25. So really little to no startup costs. Um, no formation or reporting required for these entities. The disadvantage is that it has no limited liability for the individual. So that means there's no differentiation between you and the business right and the limit is limited to a single owner because it is a sole proprietorship sole proprietorship and not um suitable for raising outside capital so if you're going to be looking to raise some outside capital then a sole proprietorship is not what you want to form you would want to form something like a partnership especially if you want to have a partner so let's talk about a partnership, which is a limited um, liability partnership or LLP. And the advantages is simple and um, inex it's simple and inexpensive to establish and maintain. Um, it has advantages of a sole proprietorship, but permits multiple owners of this enterprise, right? The disadvantages is no limited liability um for general partners each partner is responsible for the debt um or obligations of the business generally not suitable for accessing outside capital okay so this is the partnership um and then we have the next one, a limited liability company. I think most people are familiar with the limited liability company. Some advantages of the limited liability company is separation of legal entity providing for limited liability for members for the debt of the company. So it's a separation between your personal assets and your business assets. Significant management, governing, um, distribution, and ownership and there's some fle ownership flexibility in there. Ability to include social mission in governing documents. So in your bylaws, if you choose to have bylaws, you can put your social mission in there. You definitely should be putting your social mission in your business plan, most definitely. Flexible to adjust or eliminate traditional fiduciary duties to allow for increased focus on social and environment goals. Okay. Um, disadvantages generally not suitable for access to, um, to outside capital, even though there are ways around it where you can raise, um, outside capital with a limited liability company. It's ju just not the best, um, 
entity for that if that's what you're really going to be focusing on um, for your social enterprise. Because then you have to really do a lot of explaining as to what you're doing and what you're going to be using the monies for. Um, so it can get a little complicated. You have to be really good at pitching. Um, no limited liabilities or general partnerships. Each partner is responsible for the debt and obligations of the business. So those are some disadvantages of the limited liability company. And like I said, whether you're doing a limited liability company or you're doing um, some other type of company, you definitely want to make sure that you are um, that you are. What do I want to say? You're putting your mission in your business plan. You definitely want to make sure it's in your business plan for the simple reason, if it is not in your business plan, then you run the risk of actually not fulfilling your social mission. So we're going to take a break and we are going to listen to my business plan um, <laughs> promotional video. Are you an entrepreneur, nonprofit, social entrepreneur, or small business? Are you driven and motivated by your desires for success? Then don't waste any time. Take action now. TBA Consulting develops high-quality business plans that you can use as a blueprint for success. Help you stand out from your competitors. Help you generate revenue. And are worthy of being funded by banks, SBA, investor, and venture capitalists. Follow your dreams and build a business that is profitable and sustainable. Start your business plan with TBA Consulting today. Okay, and we're back. So um, now we're going to talk about some of those entities that are specific to social enterprises. And one of the first ones is the low profit limited liability company, the L3Cs, because it has three L's in it, right? Limited, low profit, limited liability company. So this is one that I know a lot of people have not heard about because it's not in every state. They're only, I want to say 17 states, if that many, that have this particular company as an entity, this type of entity in their state. So, um, and I can provide a list in the description below because I do have a list of those companies, I mean, of those states, but I just can't remember them off the top of my head right now. Okay, so advantages. One of the advantages is that it may provide access to a third, to third parties, consumers, stri um, strategic partners, investors, and others who are interested in aligning themselves with the organization's charitable purpose or social purpose. OK, um, it highlights the brands and organization as having a social or charitable purpose other than maximizing their profits um, has advantage of generally associated with a limited liability company. So the real difference between the um, low profit limited liability, which is the L3C and the LLC, is that when people hear L3C, they automatic, automatically know that you are a social enterprise. When you say you uh, organize your social enterprise under an LLC, then you have to go through long-winded um, explanations or pitches as to why you're a for-profit or how your for-profit and your social cause interact and mesh together for people to buy in because people just don't want to support your business because you say you're doing something that is sociable or um, social or charitable. They actually want to see it with these entities like the L3C, um, the Benefit Corp and the Delaware um, Social, um, the Delaware Social um, impact organization or the one in California, it slips me what the actual name of it is right now. But with those, the, when you say that's what you are, so if you're TBA consulting L3C or you're TBA consulting Benefit Corp, you automatically know that TBA consulting is a social enterprise. Some disadvantages, the same um, 
the has the same disadvantages of an LLC, right? Um, maybe easier or intent, or it may be easy to intentionally or unintentionally enter into a leave of um, of status depending on the state formation. So if you're not, most states have a reporting for their L3Cs that it's different from the LLC. And I've seen a lot of people lose their status as an L3C because they're not doing the correct reporting for that specific state. So that is something that you have to be cognizant of when you are organizing with an L3C. So let's talk about the benefit corp. So a benefit corp, some advantages of a benefit corp. It may provide access to third parties, consumer strategic partners, um, and other investors who want to be aligned with your social cause, right? Um, the advantage, um, the same general advantages apply to the corporation as it applies to a benefit corp, right? So a benefit corporation, corporation at the end. So the same type of general advantages apply to a benefit corp as does to a corporation. Highlights the brand and organize as the highlights and brands as an organization that has a social or charitable cause. That is how you're going to brand yourself. That is how you're going to promote yourself because this entity is specific to social enterprises. Okay. Um, so some disadvantages of this type of corporation is that it's relatively new. Um, and new vari there's relatively new variations of it. Like a lot of people don't know about, they don't even know it exists unless you're in this realm. You just don't know that it exists. Um, and this entity is often confused with B Labs, right? So becoming a B Corp, right? So benefit corporation and B Corp are two completely completely different things. A B Corp is um, a designation given by B Labs. It certifies that any company, whether you're L3C, LLC, nonprofit, that go through this company, you're going there and they're giving you a stamp of approval because they have certain criteria, certain um, criteria for applying and certain criteria for maintaining your status. Um, so one of them is transparency, making sure that you're actually upholding your mission, that you're doing what you say you're supposed to be doing. All of that stuff is done through uh, B Labs. It is a fee. It is a you know private corporation that certifies that you are a company that has a social cause. So B, um, so benefit corporation and B Corp as it's called, is shortened for B Corp. The, I'm talking about the certification you get from B Labs. It is also known as B Corp, so that's why it gets confused a lot with the um, benefit corporation. They're not the same thing. Okay, next. What is the next one that we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about corporations or cooperatives, actually, cooperatives. So let's talk about cooperatives. So advantages of having a cooperative is um, workers control and manage the um, the cooperative, right? Um, aligned um, Alignment of workers and investment interests, their um, accounting, accountability to the community because it is a cooperative. Everybody's working in unison together. It has favorable tax treatments for member distribution. Um, and it has expanded access to business ownership for the communities. The disadvantages of a cooperative is difficult. Um, it's difficult to raise in raising um, capital and scaling sometimes. Additional governance are required for this type of corporate, um, this type of entity and level of financial investment does not determine your control. So in a cooperative, everybody's treated equally. It doesn't mean that because you put in $100,000 and I put in $50,000 that I have more advantage or I have more power in the cooperative than you do. Everybody is treated equally in a cooperative, which does not work for a lot of people because they would like to have control based on the amount of money that they actually uh, put into 
the corporate into anything and that they, they actually invest into the business. So yeah, it may not work for everyone. All right. So the last one we want to talk about is the hybrid. And a lot of people find this to be very interesting because they haven't really heard about this model before, or they don't really understand how it works. And, um, it's fairly, it's not new, but it's fairly new for a lot of people in this social enterprise space, because before it was not really, it was kind of frowned upon, but it's becoming more and more popular. So it's the hybrid model. And the hybrid model says that um, the advantages, I should say, is that it allows access to the widest pool of capital, right? Because remember you have the for-profit and the non-profit, including equity, investments, and char sorry, charitable donations. Um, facilitates um, scaling of mission-driven entities by allowing revenue generation, thereby freeing such entities from reliance on charitable donations alone. So we know that's that one of the things that um, nonprofits have a problem with is that they are they are at the mercy mercy of charitable donations. With this type of entity, you're able, I guess, again, like I said, to have earned income have investors and still get donations and do all of your other types of fundraising. It provides versatility um, in adapting business um, forms and desired goals for the entrepreneur, right? So you're not locked in to all of the regulations from the IRS. May increase the ability to attract incentive talent um, through equity incentives for employees. So that means like in your for profit in your for profit, you may be able to sell some shares to your employees or have them invest in some way, pay them really good wages, unlike most nonprofits that are not able to pay their employees, sometimes even livable wage because they're just barely scrunting by. So some disadvantages of having this type of entities, organizational structure may be a little bit complex. Um, it requires continual documentation regarding the flow of funds because the funds in this type of entity must stay separate. You cannot have your for-profit and your non-profit um, funds commingling. That is an absolute no-no. And um, it is definitely a little difficult and costly to establish and maintain this type of entity. So that is one of the other reasons that a lot of people shy away from this, because this is not something, this is not a DIY project. This is something that you need, definitely need to get some legal advice on putting together. So that is it, guys. This is kind of long. I'm sorry. But those are the legal structures that social enterprises can, again, um, form under. I hope that this was really helpful. Um, there is going to be a blog on this. So just make sure that you're checking out my blog all the time and that you're signing up for my newsletter. All of the information to do that is going to be in the description below. So make sure that you sign up um, and let's get our social enterprises together. Bye everyone. Oh, I'll play my um, promo video again. <laughs> Are you an entrepreneur, nonprofit, social entrepreneur, or small business? Are you driven and motivated by your desires for success? Then don't waste any time. Take action now. TBA Consulting develops high quality business plans that you can use as a blueprint for success. Help you stand out from your competitors. Help you generate revenue and are worthy of being funded by banks, SBA, investor, and venture capitalists. Follow your dreams and build a business that is profitable and sustainable. Start your business plan with TBA Consulting today. Bye.